Ladies and Fairs, please sit down. Please find your seats. Our learning objective this morning is going to be looking at mood, right? Um, and so we are going to be doing a bunch of different activities and some learning experiences and some check-in about what mood means in terms of verbs and grammar. My name is Jessica Lara. I teach eighth grade English and history at Bullis Charter School in Los Altos, California. A lesson flow is essentially a framework for um, teachers to help drive their instruction, ideally trying to infuse technology into the different elements to really make a robust, pedagogically sound lesson. In my classroom, I use lesson flows to help teach my lessons, to guide my instruction, and to make sure that my students are getting opportunities to use technology in meaningful ways to help meet their learning objectives. The process for today's lesson overall is going to be, we're going to learn about mood using this Nearpod. Then we are going to write some examples using a computer with your partner. Then you are going to create a skit. We're going to be using a Google Doc to write the script. I'm going to be asking you to indicate what type of mood each sentence is. And then you are going to use your Telegami app to record your central monologue. Okay? And so I think the lesson flow really helps teachers make sure they're using technology for educational purposes, but also are kind of bringing up the quality of their own lesson. We are going to start off our lesson this morning with a short little video. Um, you may recognize the show. It might have been something you watched when you were a little child. In the hook of the lesson, the students are really going to be exposed to kind of get them, trying to get them engaged in what we're going to be doing next. And so I'm using a video um, from PBS Kids. And so I really want students to sort of start thinking about dialogue and how people use dialogue to communicate as well as being able to use that as a springboard into conversations about verbs and sentences. We're going to come back to this video um, later in this lesson and sort of see if you guys have some more, a better understanding of what mood means in terms of this. So please pull out your iPads. Um, we are going to look at a Nearpod presentation. In the direct instruction part of the lesson, the students are going to be interacting with me using the app called Nearpod. Um, I have created a essentially a mini lesson about mood and the different types of mood. All right, so can you guys write a sentence using the subjunctive mood? There's an opportunity for me to have the students write in answers. It's a great way to do a quick check-in, whether or not they're understanding what we're talking about and what I need to reiterate or what I need to check in with specific students about. OK, who would like to share their sentence? Tommy. I highly recommend that you brush your teeth 47 times a day. Excellent. Thanks, Tommy. So in guided practice, students use the website Padlet. It's an interactive wall, essentially, where students are, going to work, are working in with partners to create sentences that exhibit different types of mood. And then they post the different sentences on the wall, and all the students can see the wall. And so it helps students who are, who are struggling or who, who aren't quite, don't quite understand yet the different types of mood. They're able to use each other's examples that are posted as models for their own sentences. Okay. Who can share an example of an imperative sentence? A command. CC. Eat your vegetables. I think those are the easiest moods. The next mood is the conditional mood. The lesson flow really gives teachers the opportunity to reimagine how a lesson will happen in their classroom. Traditionally, they have a five-step lesson plan that they sort of plug things into, and this is really helping them reimagine what is possible. It's allowing them to really think about what technology tools and applications will really help their students meet the learning objectives, as well as kind of pushing them to think about, is there more than one type of technology that will help me get there? Girls, you done? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so why don't you guys log on to your Google Docs? Um, and you can start your script? Okay. In the independent practice section, students are using Google Docs to create a script. They're working in partners to create a, a monologue, ideally. And then they have the um, opportunity to take their script and sort of like bring it alive through the Telegami app. They're good. I wish you'd just stop talking to me. If I stop talking to you, who They love to record themselves. They're creating something, so they're really engaged. Um, and some of them get really silly, which makes it even more fun for them. <laughs> In the wrap-up, the focus really is on students showing mastery to me and showing how much they mastered the learning objective. Students use their iPads to participate in a Kahoot quiz. Are you guys ready? Let's see who knows the types of sentences. I essentially 
post up questions in the student's user iPad to respond to the, the questions. I'm able to track the data on my end to see which students get it correct. The students like it because it's colorful and it's fast and it's fun. Um, and it's a quick way to recheck in to make sure the learning objective is being met. And if it hasn't been, which students I need to follow up with. The point of today's lesson was to teach us about mood and go kind of deeper into the verb mood and show how it is connected with sentences. I think I really liked using telegami because you could uh, actually uh, make your own virtual character. I like the aspect that we could customize it, but we still were like learning. And I think that because of that, and since we record our own voices saying the sentences that we learn with mood and everything, I think that um, it stuck with me better. And I, if someone quizzed me right now, I would be able to confidently answer. My favorite tool to use was Padlet because I liked how we could share our answers, compare and contrast, and I think it was cool to be able to look at other people's work and, and their telegamis. That was interesting. I like that. But I think that using all the different tools, we got to get a different experience every time we used a different tool. And that way, um, we got to experience different learning strategies. And I thought that really made it easy for me to remember what we learned by using so many different apps. Designing this lesson as a lesson flow was useful to me because it really, it forced me to really think about what the purpose of each technology tool really is. So it's very easy to fall into a trap and be like, oh, it's fun and I'm going to use it for this, I'm going to use it for that. Um, and so it really does kind of pushes you to think about what really is getting at what you want. I would definitely recommend lesson flows to other teachers because I think it's a great way to really make sure students understand how to use different tools for different purposes. Okay, excellent you guys, thank you very much. Uh -huh.